if I if I know my facts correctly, is that Mars right now is a one way trip. People who are signing up to fly to Mars is they know they're gonna stay there, and that's that's the end of it. Well, I wrote look, I wrote 15, 12, 15 years ago on a, uh, an article I think in the New York Times called a one way trip to Mars, saying if we went to Mars, it should be one way. It's the only rational way to do it. Fine, good, okay, big deal. So. Most of them would be one way trip. They won't even make the whole trip. They'll be dead. But um, so yeah, and then and then they'll be there, and great, and a few of them will populate things, and maybe and maybe they'll survive, and and over time we'll have a maybe a, a scientific base there, maybe, uh, and that's nice, and that's going to take time and hundreds of billions of dollars, not tens, hundreds of billions of dollars, and. Um, and sure, I'm not against that in the in, in as long as it doesn't bankrupt the real science that that we do in space with with remote sensors. And so, but okay, what it's not it's it's it'll be nice, you know, for some people to do that. And I suspect it, in advance, it sounds romantic to go on a one way trip to Mars and never come back. We'll see whether how many people actually would want to do it. When I, when I wrote that piece for the New York times, I think I asked, I went around asking people and I, and I, and basically everyone said, yes, yeah, we do it. All the engineers and scientists wow. uh, um, that I spoke to at the time, I'm not sure when push comes to shove, where they really want to do that um, because it's, it's not going to be a very pleasant life. It, it won't, it won't. And I think that, like you say, it's a, it's a romantic idea. It's and a lot of hype, you know. There's certain people who are hyping many things by suggesting they're going to do it in the near future, and I look. I'd love to be wrong, but it's it's not going to happen in the near future. And it, by me, by the near future, I mean in the next decade. I'm hoping. I'm, I'm hoping that at least in my lifetime, I do see, you know, maybe a a, a huge advancement there. Just because... I suspect in your lifetime, you'll see an, a base on Mars. I mean, a base on the Moon. Sorry. In your lifetime, you'll see a base on the moon. I expect we'll have a base on the moon. There are good arguments for doing that. Um, whether we have a base on Mars in your lifetime is more dubious, in my opinion. What's a good argument for you uh, for a base on the moon? I, I haven't heard that before. Well, first of all, it gives us a, a learning experience of how to build and how to, you know, I mean, if it's, a, it's a test base. It's easy to get to. Hmm. Mars is a hell of a lot harder to get to. And I mean a hell of a lot harder to get to. More expensive, more dangerous, and, you know, it's exponentially more difficult to get to Mars than the moon. So it's a, if you're going to test yourself, do it on the moon. You learn how to do materials, how to build construction, how to, how to build bases. And then there, there are a number of things you could do on the, on the moon that are, you know, you could imagine um, a telescope, a radio telescope in particular on the far side of the moon, which would be shielded from radio signals from the Earth and it'd be more quiet. Mm -hmm. So you could imagine some, and you could also look for, you know, water on the moon and try and understand planetary processes so uh, you know uh, because it's not prohibitive i think a, a base on the moon as a research facility and a and a and a, and a way to learn how to uh, uh, survive and also travel more efficiently is a, is a great first step and how can we you know if 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 i go to space right now i'm gonna be taking with me my biases, you know, my ideologies. Probably, you know, I would think that maybe we should name it the United States of the Moon. How should we engage with, you know, if we get to Moon, who who owns it or how? We're already talking. There's those ridiculous things are already happening. Who's going to own? And there's already going to be internet. You know, people are talking about putting weapons in in the Earth orbits. It's it's awful. Um, yeah, I mean, look, the real reason that the reason that the U.S. went to the moon and then stopped is because the whole sole reason to go to the moon was a was a national pride and a and an international competition argument. They didn't care about going to the moon per se or what we learned. It was proving that the U.S. could do it. The U.S. proved it could do it. And then they said, "Okay, we've done it." And and a lot of what of you know, science is not the driver. It would be lovely if science were the driver of a lot of these things, but a lot of it is international politics. And, um, uh, but you know, uh, there, there's always a scientific argument that's used that certain science will be done there. Uh, 
but uh, you know how we handle the moon and whether we do, we agree that it's not any, the property of any nation and that all nations work together. Ideally, a Star Trek future is a, a, a great future where somehow going into space unifies humanity. And it's done it to some extent. When humans land on the moon, I was alive, you weren't. But, uh, it, you know, all of humanity was together when, that, when the first humans landed on the moon. Everyone was watching it from around the world. So space in principle can be great.